Well, my name is Helen Sear and I'm the uh, representative for Wales in um, this 56th um, Biennale in Venice. Um, and we're in Santa Maria Auxilia Trice, which is the site for Wales in Venice 2015. Can you talk us through your work and give us an idea of the concept behind it? The work is spread out over five different rooms and um, in a sense it's a whole new suite of works so each room has its own kind of individual identity um, but hopefully through, through working with the curator Stuart Cameron and myself we've tried to create a kind of dialogue um, between the pieces of work as you walk through the space one way and on the way back. Um, the work consists of um, moving image, still image, light box, um, photographs printed directly onto aluminium dye bond and in a sense they're a kind of um, distillation of a lot of um, ideas that I've had for quite a long time and uh, the distillation of, of previous works and my kind of interest in, in photography but in trying to sort of somehow disrupt the single point perspective of the camera because normally the camera, whether it's a moving image or still image, sort of prioritises the eye over all the other senses. And what I want to do with the works is to try and um, activate the viewer in some sort of way or, or kind of disrupt that single point perspective. Well, you certainly do that. I mean, people walk in and it's immediately dark and then there's the film, which is really quite powerful. Can you tell us a little about the film? The film was... Um, it was filmed in Wales, very close to my home in, in rural Monmouthshire. And I, 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 I discovered this small beech wood with trees that had been numbered with fluorescent paint and I assumed it was for, for felling. Um, and the numbers went from 1 to 83. And at the time that I first did that, which was last year when I first found the, the, the wood, that was the kind of same age as my mother. And I'd been thinking about all sorts of things about temporality and time and mortality and it became quite a, a special place for me and this kind of juxtaposition of number and nature um, which which is kind of quite incongruous in a way so it's a site that I continued to visit for over a year just with a single camera and a tripod and was filming you know throughout different lights different seasons and um, I always had in mind that I I don't really see it as a film, although there are a lot of cinematic, cinematic references uh, and literary references really, but, um, such as, I don't know, um, Drowning by Numbers, for instance, by Peter Greenaway, which is a film where, where it goes from one to a hundred throughout the film. In this film, there's a countdown from 83 to one. But I'd also been looking at a um, collage by Max Ernst of a zoetrope with a young girl and birds flying out. So I kind of, there were lots of different things going on um, and I wanted to make something which had a kind of very sculptural presence in the space. So when you enter the space, you're first introduced to the sound piece and you see the back of the screen and, and, and you see the, 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 the flickering film lighting up the whole of the altar piece and the other, the other works of art that exist in the space um, and then as you go around you see the projection piece. How long is the projection if you watched it? From the, the loop is about 11 minutes but I think because it's so it's intense it's two, two, two films that have been cut together very fast in two, two and three frames. One is of my stepdaughter um, who is um, circling this tree with her hand on the tree backwards and forwards a little bit, bit like the circular zoetrope and the other is cut with all the filming that I made in the woods um, the, 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 the woods with the um, trees that were numbered and they're cut together so I suppose what I wanted really was that not, quite often I've done work with sort of figure and landscape and that's been quite in, quite important to me but I wanted that not to be a separation, I wanted the two to be inseparable. So one, you know, it's almost like the landscape's imprinted on the figure, rather than this idea of, you know, like in Caspar David Friedrich or something where there's a figure, lone figure in the landscape. So it's, I suppose it's about kind of um, treating the landscape as another character or, an, or, or a, of equal status to our, to our own sort of human selves, really.
the, the reason that I chose the sort of orange red dress was really to match the numbers on the trees in a sense. But I was also kind of thinking very much, not so much of the content of Don't Look Now, but the way that Nicholas Rogue actually cuts film is very, very interesting. And he kind of disrupts a linear narrative as well. Um, so that was, that was a film that I, you know, I was um, very interested in. I saw it when it first came out. But also, you know, the Peter Greenway, as I said before, Drowning by Numbers, also Fahrenheit 451, the Truva film at the end, where nature becomes a kind of safe haven for culture. And all these people are kind of um, walking around, they've memorised a whole book, and, they, and this is their kind of um, hiding place. And, um, yeah, so there were a number of different references, but what I also liked about the, the red dress was when, it, when it's at that, this scale, it almost becomes, you know, because I'm talking about content but also materiality, it's almost like a red, um, you know, those cinema screens that kind of move back and across the screen. At that scale, it kind of has a quality of that for me as well. It's interesting, you mentioned um, Caspar David Friedrich, yeah. but and obviously that links to the sublime. There's certainly yeah. an element of sort of something magical or mystical or beyond comprehension look almost like fairies and otherworldly. Well, I'm quite, well, yeah, there, I mean, there are relations to kind of um, folklore and mythology. And I'm a particular fan of Angela Carter and um, the, her, her film, The Company of Wolves. I mean, I call this Company of Trees, but also the John Berger quote on the wall was really important for this work because it kind of relates trees to architecture, to measurement of our own sort of space within the world. And also, of course, like Venice's, <clears throat> Is supported by petrified tree trunks. Um, I mean, come in on the vaporetto, and there's numbers on the on the bound tree trunks. So it all. We we were thinking very. I was thinking very much about the local when I was making the work, but also of how it was going to be sited in Venice, what that meant, how we could respond to Venice, and also how something very personal or poetic or local could have a bit more strike a universal chord in some sort of way. And of course, there's the carnivalesque element of Venice as well. Yes, yes. I mean, I think the sort of... I mean, for me, it was a little bit about... Not so much carnivalesque, but a little bit about the idea of illusion and perception, and smoke and mirrors. In a way, we call, this, we call the exhibition The Rest is Smoke. And that comes from a very small inscription on the Mantegna painting of San Sebastian, which is now in the Cadoro in Venice. And the, 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 the piece, the yellow light box piece, is a kind of reworking of, the, of that painting. Um, so that the, the, the place where the rapeseed field has been, the photograph of the rapeseed field has been pierced by the stalks that I dug up, I pulled out after it had been harvested, is in exactly the same position as the, where the arrows are piercing the body of Saint Sebastian in the painting in the Cadora, and it's just exactly the same height. So we, so we did respond to, to a piece particularly in Venice. That's amazing. Um, and that piece is obviously very yellow-orange. The whole room mm. is kind of filled mm. with that colour light. You seem to have those two colours carrying through the whole exhibition, like the orange and then the green. Well, I'm very, very interested in colour as being something um, that can um, affect you physically. Um, it's not a kind of cerebral thing, it's, it, it, it's something that, that's, that's much more visceral. And I think what I'm really interested in the work is, and with lens-based work in particular, is the materiality of the image. And I think that's something I've hopefully been able to play with and throughout the show. So for instance, the piece Stack, it's all printed onto aluminium strips, that was the decision to do that was related to the chainsaw, in a way, that metal chainsaw that had cut the wood and then printing that back onto aluminium. And also in the film, a, the, the soundtrack is made up of um, sounds of birds and chainsaws. And that kind of filters through the space. So you can, when you're in the little sacristy watching the birds, um, the sort of li my living diorama piece in a way, you can hear the bird sound come through and sometimes when you're here you can hear the chainsaw sound. So hopefully the, there are kind of connections to be made but it's not a linear narrative or anything. I want, I want the work to be felt on the kind of pre-conscious level in a way. I mean I can talk about the ideas and everything but for me it, if it's a kind of 
the effective quality on the viewer is really important to me. So it's not just, you don't, you don't just kind of stand there and passively consume it in a way, but you're kind of constantly disrupted or yeah. ma made to move through something. The little bird piece, the diorama, is absolutely beautiful. There's something really kind of almost traditional and yeah. taking you back to the sort of early days of yes. photography. Well, and actually, that was, that was something that's interesting as well, because always, quite often people say, well, you know, this kind of di this diametrically opposed thing between analogue and digital. Well, we're all, it's just all in a historical timeline. And although most of the work is made digitally, I think it's referring back to kind of the materiality of film or analogue film. So, you know, in the, in the counting down, it's almost like leader film when it goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, et cetera, et cetera. But with the, yeah, with the black and white bird piece, it's almost like a kind of camera obscura or something. Um, yeah, it does look like an old black and white movie. It, it, it kind of does refer back to...